What's going on guys? Today's video, we're gonna talk about the recession of 2022 and the great meltdown and how our government is lying to us. I'm gonna try to find that clip and put it in this video. But once again, we have been talking about economic data and this year has been a doozy. The stock market has been down for two months. The longest period of time that the stock market has been down for 90 years. Amazon is laying off. Walmart is laying off. Target is laying off. Carvana is laying off. There's a multitude of companies that are laying off. So what is going to happen during the great meltdown? And the reason I call it the, the great meltdown is this happened very, very fast, really, really fast. And in my video that I put on Savage Finance, if you didn't know, Savage Finance is starting again. You cannot prepare for the recession if you weren't already prepared before it happened. So today's video is brought to you by Glendon Cameron School. What you should do today, do yourself a favor and sign, enroll in home economics, which is the basis of everything that I teach. You must have proper money management. The link is below. And if you really want to enhance your money making skills, because there's the course of managing money and then there's the course of making money. But fundamentally, you need to learn how to manage and optimize your money before you start making money. Once you do that, then it's off to the races. And this is how you can begin to realize everything that you want to realize. You can drive the car you want to drive. You can live in the house you want to live in. You can live in the neighborhood you can live in. You can even live in the country. And I'm going to talk about that. Um, one of the things uh, I'm getting ready to say is the way that the American economy is set up. If you're willing to work, if you're willing to put forth the work, time and effort, there's a guy on here, YouTube called Max Chewing. He created a new product called Sour Strips. He sold 10 million of these sour strips in the last three years. Max Chewing is a millionaire because he participates in the economy. He doesn't try to do Bitcoin. He doesn't try to rent seek. He participates in the economy and that is why he's rich. So just a word to you. So let's get off into this video. Okay. Now I've been doing a lot of um, predictions and forecasting and I've been pretty spot on, but with the new information that we got, things are changing very quickly. I understand and I acknowledge that at the end of the second quarter of 2022, they will officially declare a recession. Now, what does that mean? If they officially declare a recession, we're in the recession right now. And this is one of the things because uh, I've been looking at certain signals. Uh, there's a guy named Nugs, N-U-G-G-S, and there's a guy named Moore's Finance. And there's a guy that's called Bentley Coop DoorDash Diaries. I consume their content because it helps me get a feel for the, the pulse of America. And these videos do really well because here's the thing. If you're in a good market, you can make more money doing DoorDash than you can working some of these jobs. And I mean twelve to $1,500 per week, which, you know, after gas and depreciation of your car, it's about $1,200, but that's $4,800 a month. The average American is only bringing home two to $2,500 per month. So this is an increase of 2,300 bucks a month. So that's quite significant. And I'm starting to see that people are starting to get smart. Like one of the things, like once again, I talked about the racial demographics of like box trucking is mostly black. Semi trucking, if you watch semi trucks, you will see a good mixture of white people and black people doing semi trucking. But hot shot trucking is 
pretty much predominantly black. And one of the things that I am seeing is that people are starting to feel real economic pain. And real economic pain produces change. And people are starting to make changes. Walmart's down, Amazon's down, Target's down, but guess who's up? Dollar Tree, Dollar General, their sales are exploding because people are taking their precious dollars and they're putting places where their dollars go further. So Dollar Tree and General Dollar and all these other dollar store sales are through the roof right now. They're actually gaining market share because the consumer is trying to stretch his or her dollars because of the price of food, because of the price of gas and rent. Let's talk about rent. Um, we're going to have a recession. We're going to have an economic meltdown. But I do not believe that rent is going to collapse. I believe rent will stabilize, but rent will not collapse because this is something uh, I've been very interested in. I've been looking at my next move. I don't know if I'm going to stay here another year or I'm going to get out. And I've been looking. I am completely shocked at the rental market for my neighborhood. I am seeing like my last place, the mortgage was 3,500 bucks per month, right? I am seeing houses and it was 5,000 square feet sitting on two acres in zip code 30327. I am seeing houses half that size going for five to $7,000 per month. And I'm just like, I ain't paying that. I mean, I might as well stay where I'm at because yes, this place is expensive, but I get you know, every, you know, one of the things I love to do is come home at night and see the view and see all the city lights and stuff. So I like that. So what I'm seeing, even for me, if I was to participate in the rental market, I will be paying more for less. Let me say that again. I would be paying more for less, but I don't feel that the rental market is going to collapse. I believe it will stabilize and I believe the rents will stop skyrocketing, but I don't think it's going to collapse, which brings us up to real estate, which is doing double monkey backflips right now. Uh, right now, this happened really, really quickly. I originally predicted that the buying opportunities would occur in the fourth quarter or the first quarter of 2023. I need to correct that information. The buying opportunities will be this summer because what is happening is, once again, you have to understand that the ability to get cheap money drove the real estate market for a long, long time. And with the interest rate hikes by the Fed, cheap money is no longer cheap. And every time they raise the interest rates of the Fed, X amount of people fall below the qualifications. Essentially, let's say in January, you qualified for a $500,000 house at 2.5%. Now at five, almost 6%, you can only qualify for a $350,000 house. So this is deeply impacting the market. And what is what sellers who were enjoying, you know, being the pretty girl at the prom are starting to make concessions. Uh, there are people who are putting a house on the market. They will get a contract. And because of the interest rate hikes, the person who, when they put the contract in, they could have got a mortgage for that house. Now, since it takes, 30, 60 days to close on the house. During that time period, the mortgage rates went up. They no longer qualify for that house and they're having to cancel the contract. And this is happening all over the place, but it's really happening in the markets where home appreciation has been stupid. It's been bananas. So these uh, sellers are now finding themselves in the position where they got a deal, they got to come to the table, they got to make concessions, they got to make price cuts because um, some of this home appreciation was just 
beyond reason. I was reading, I was reading the story where this couple bought a house three years ago for 600,000 and they were trying to sell it for 1.2 million, a hundred percent appreciation of this house. Now, this is the thing. If you, if you ever bought a house and you ever had a mortgage, the bank is not going to lend you more money than established comps. So let's say you, you go ahead and the seller is trying to get $750,000 for this house, but all the comps say are six fifty. dollars the bank is not going to loan you that 750 and the most they would loan you is six something. So this is impacting the market. So as soon as August, you're going to see a lot of buying opportunities for the following reasons. Number one, new construction is coming on the market. And a lot of these builders went ahead and borrowed a lot of money and they're building these new developments and they're going to be in for a pricing shock because in their mind, they were going to sell it for this, but they're going to have to make pricing concessions. Number two, the number of people who are buying Airbnb, Airbnbs, that market is going to collapse. Like there is the, let's talk about the Airbnb market. There is people who are renting a room in their house. That market is pretty much going to stay stable. And there are people who are renting luxury experience Airbnbs. That market's going to stay stable. What market's going to get squeezed? That middle market. That middle market of people who just went ahead and got a house and put some cheap ass furniture, some uncomfortable mattresses, hung up some shitty pictures. That market is about to collapse because it's flooded. There are too many people who are participating in that market. There are too many people who have got these big ass mortgages and there's an expectation. Like there's a chick on YouTube called Shelby church and she bought a house for Airbnb and she's in a pretty hot rental market for Airbnb. She's in California and based upon her outlay of cash of almost half a million dollars, she's looking at three to 4 million three to four, excuse me, three to four years to get the money that she invested back before she starts making profit. And she's one of the lucky ones because a lot of people who are participating because she's more toward the upper end, you know, it's a house with a heated pool. So that's an experienced Airbnb and she spent $30,000. Uh, I think Shelby did a really good job because, you know, when I was thinking about doing Airbnb, I wasn't just going to go out and get some cheap furniture. I was going to go out and get some nice furniture and it was like 20, 30. And you see with these Airbnb courses, they teach you to go get trash furniture. And the thing is, if I had the, op the, the option to stay in a five star hotel or one of these trash Airbnbs, I would stay in the five star hotel because I know what I'm getting. I know what I'm because I've stayed in some lovely, beautiful hotels. I'm getting ready to take a trip to the Bahamas and I'm not going to be in the Airbnb. I'm going to be in the five star hotel. So one of the things that you're going to see is a lot of these quote investors are going to start liquidating their prop, their properties. So you got the new construction, you have the current homeowners who are making price concessions and the, Airbnb hosts who are not making the money that they thought they can make. They're going to flood the market with properties. I expect this to start really happening July and I really expect it to take off in the fall. So between July and December, there's going to be a lot of buying opportunities. There's going to be a lot of distressed property sales because here's the thing. Many of these people who have property, you know, and also foreclosures, foreclosures are rising. Now in this market, you would ask yourself, why would someone allow their house to go into foreclosure when they can just sell it? The number one reason they have no equity. A lot of people, and this is one of the reasons that the housing market is not going to collapse like it did in 2008, because the buyer is typically better qualified, but you've got a lot of people who were well-qualified buyers. They went ahead, they bought a house and guess what they did? 
They got a HELOC. They got a second mortgage. They took equity out of the house and now they're in the position where they cannot sell that house unless they sell it as a short sale and the banks are not trying to do that. So they're going into foreclosure. So we've got the current sellers, we've got the Airbnb people, we've got uh, foreclosures, we have new constructions. All of this is going to deeply impact the price of houses going forward. And then we have the great meltdown. Right now, I'm, like every day I read um, stats and stuff about companies laying off. And one of the things that's going to be, and this is one of my predictions, that the um, stock market is going to be down for a long, long time. I don't think it's going to bounce back next month. I feel that we're going to enter a period, and I'm going to explain to you why I feel this way, a period of the stock market being punished because we have so many companies, Uber, Tesla, you know, someone tried to correct me, uh, Tesla's made a profit. All right, Tesla's been in business since I believe 2013 and it's, it, it had one year making a profit. One year. And this is what the training's gonna be on today at four o'clock because right now, the stock market in many regards is a giant Ponzi scheme. You have all of these companies that generate billions in revenue, but don't generate a profit. How long can you keep playing that game? Because what are they living off of? Investor money, seeds of funding, rounds of funding. And at some point, the investors are gonna get tired of putting money in companies that don't make a profit. I mean, they're not investing billions of dollars just to be a good guy. They're investing this money because they expect to make a return. And once it becomes quite clear that many of these companies are not going to make a return, you're gonna see a lot of these companies have to downsize. Uber, DoorDash, uh, like this is what's funny. And this is something that's gonna happen in the rebirth of Hustlers Kung Fu. One of the things that you need to understand is you cannot play that game that an Uber or DoorDash plays because they have billions of dollars of investors' money. If you have a small business like I do, you have to work on being profitable. You cannot play this game. And this is why, you know, I'm, I'm working on a book called The Art of Profit. And if you have a a small business, one of the worst things you can do is start a business on a loan. Let me give you the playbook of what I was gonna do with the car rental business. I started the car rental business with $400,000 cash. I rented an office, I bought cars, I went on the platform. My goal was to get revenue and cash flow before I started using loans or lines of credit because once you have established cash flow, that makes it much easier to weather the storm of borrowing money. But if you borrow money right off the riff, your profitability is dramatically reduced because you have to service that loan. And once again, if I had taken out a $400,000 loan to get in the car rental business, I would have lost so much money. I would have lost so much money. So we're going to get into the educational foundex because you know, I'm gonna teach you guys how to look at these YouTubers who are straight up lying. They're just straight up lying. These YouTubers who are, because um, here's the thing, the reason that they're able to lie and manipulate you is because you don't know better. And here at Glendon Cameron School, we're gonna get into the fundamentals of business because Running a small business is very different than running an Uber, a DoorDash, an Apple. It is night and day. So one of the things that I was really, really smart on was with all my businesses, they were profitable right out the gate. And you wanna know why they were profitable? Because I didn't invest, that $400,000 that I invested in the car rental business is the largest capital investment that I've ever made in any business. Uh, my first business that made $250,000 in one year, I've invested zero money in starting it. 
Um, the storage auction business, I invested about 20, 30,000 starting it. And in about six months, I was at about 15, $20,000 per month. And then over the years, because the first year after I got through with being played and toyed with, and then once I started to learn the business, we were consistently making 15,000. So that first year, that first full year after we started reaching money, we made 185,000. I only invested like 30, 40,000. So I got my money back plus plenty of profit. And then the next year, we consistently hit $25,000 per month. Once we started to work out our formats, uh, setting up the eBay stores, setting up the Amazon stores, because one of the things, we sold a lot of books on Amazon because we got so many books and storage units that we literally was doing five to 7,000 a month just selling books on Amazon. So once those things started to scale up and once we got them established, then that next year, we entered the realm of 35 to 40,000 a month. And then the year after that, we started to do 50, 60,000 a month. And this is the thing, the original spend of buying storage units didn't change. What we did as a company became more efficient. And this is stuff I'm going to teach you because here's the thing. Everyone's talking about like, get all this money and start a company and invest and invest and invest. One of the reasons I am just not interested in any of that stuff is I have experienced starting a business with zero money and making $250,000 the first year. I've experienced starting a business with $30,000 and making $185,000 the first year. So this is one of the basis and foundations of the fundamentals of business is if you're running a small business, you've got to be profitable. And that's why home economics is the basis course, because here's the thing, the average American's money management skills are deplorable. They spend every damn dime living and they, there's no surplus. There's no savings account. 50% uh, of America, if they had a thousand dollar emergency, they'd be in trouble. That's really sad because here in the United States of America, going back to Max Chewing. Um, he just started this thing, Sour Strips. And Max Chewing has a YouTube channel. He has a, a clothing brand. So he has some exposure and he was able to tap into an audience with this Sour Strip candy where he shipped 10 million packages of Sour Strips in three years. 10 million, that's a multi-million dollar business. And that's just one of his businesses. And he did that right now. What, 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 what has happened? He's it's three years, right? The last two years has been the pandemic. So once again, what you want to do, and you know, going back to my video, because like I said, I'm getting ready to clean up Savage Finance. Give me some time. This month is a month of setting stuff up and um, putting things together, but I'm gonna put out a high quality podcast. And the art of profit, I'm not gonna do a video podcast, and I'm gonna explain to you why. I used to do podcasting in the past, and I've noticed that when the camera isn't on you, you can be a little freer. And it reflects in the podcast, because I had the American Hustler podcast which I was just talking and I didn't have the camera on me. So this is gonna be an audio only podcast and I'm gonna do a Savage Finance podcast. So typically I'm probably just gonna do one episode per week and then there's, there's some other ideals because yesterday I spent time getting the intros and outros, ordered them on Fiverr before I get started and then I gotta set it up and I ordered some equipment so it's gonna be a really high quality podcast. It's not gonna be something that I'm just gonna to throw together. So that's gonna go down. But once again, guys, the recession is here. We're not having a recession coming. The recession is here. And there will be people who will make millions during the recession because their position to make millions. If you have a normal job 
and your only option to get rich is using the stock market, the next few years is going to be extremely tough for you. Whereas you can be like Max Chewing and you can go ahead and put together a business and make millions within three to five years and live the life that you want to live. One of the things is I see a lot of people live in a hand to mouth existence. They're not living the life that they want to live. Like our rich journey. Um, and I'm about to say something, you know, they put out a lot of content and a lot of people love them. I don't have to move to Portugal to have a high quality life. And uh, you know, he put up a video talking about five reasons to leave <coughs> America. And one of those issues was health care. Let me explain to you what happened. Because I live in, lived in zip code 30327, I was very close to some of the finest hospitals in the country. So when I had my heart attack, I went to Northside Emergency Room and then from Northside Emergency Room, I got transferred to St. Joe's because they specialize in treating people with heart failure. I went to a specialist hospital. My cardiologist is world renowned. So I got the best health care, the best experience, you know, rest in peace to Kevin Samuels. Um, I don't, you know, like I said, I, I'm assuming that Kevin had a heart attack and he probably had a full blockage because one of the things that saved me was I was fully conscious and aware. My heart attack didn't just hit me and I feel because I was working out and I was in, you know, my diet wasn't the best, but I was in pretty good shape and I was able to get to the hospital before the heart attack really started rolling. Because when I got to the hospital, I got into the emergency room, and that's when I couldn't breathe. It's like I can't breathe because I had the full blockage and everything was starting to shut down. And that's when I was intubated, and that's when I was out for three days while they were fixing it. But I got the best health care because I'm fucking rich. Let me say this again. If I had been on the south side, I probably wouldn't be here. Let me say this again. If I had lived on the south side and I had to go to a hospital on the south side, I probably would not be here. So if you want to have the best of the best health care, you need to get fucking rich and stop playing the fuck around and trying to go to another country so you can get some free health care. This is from experience. I'm, I'm giving you from experience. So if you want the best health care for your family, you need to position yourself in a nice neighborhood because like I said, I went to Northside, St. Joe's is across the street, uh, children's uh, health care is across the street. These are the best hospitals, not just in Georgia, but they're renowned across the world. There were kids who would come from other countries to get surgeries and treatment at Scottish Rite when I worked there. So instead of hoping and wishing that you can get the best of the best for little or nothing, level up. Level the fuck up. I'm speaking to you from experience. If I was still poor and I was living where I used to live, uh, that heart attack would have took me out. But because, uh, once again, I lived maybe 10 minutes from the hospital. All of this is a factor. All of this is a factor. All of this is a factor. So in the United States of America, you can get the best health care if you position yourself. My health insurance is like $450 per month. Um, and it's just me and I got full, you know, full coverage. And I'm gonna I'm, I'm explain something to you. Uh, my health insurance is for catastrophe, like another heart attack or something. That's why I have health insurance. You want to know why I pay for my doctor's visits? It is cheaper to pay cash for doctor's visits. I pay my cardiologist. Every time I go, it's like 130 bucks. Uh, my kidney doctor, it was uh, 130 bucks. And recently, when my uh, gout treatment, it was $139. So 
I only use, my insurance is just there for catastrophic events. But uh, I feel this year I paid $260 going to the doctor. The whole, for the, and then I got a checkup at my cardiologist and I got a checkup at my kidney doctor. So essentially I'm gonna be seen, be treated for less than a thousand dollars. And this is high quality care. My cardiologist is world renowned. My kidney doctor is world renowned. I am seeing the top specialists in the field and I'm not paying a lot of money because I know how the game works. Because you know, uh, one of the things that I like years and years ago when I had a family plan, I was paying like four fifty a month for a family of four. And one of the things, you know, we're, we're going to talk about this because guess what? My health insurance, since my company pays it, is a tax deduction. Like these glasses, this is wardrobe for YouTube. This is a tax deduction. I got a bunch of glasses. So the equipment that I have coming for the podcast is a tax deduction. See, many of you are not playing the game. The game is playing you, and this is why you are losing. You're losing. You're losing because you don't know how to play the game. You don't know how to be a player in the game because you're trying to rent seek or you're trying to do something that YouTube is very good at convincing people that they can turn a little money into a lot of money. YouTube is famous for that. And this is why so many people are going to lose during this great wealth transfer because they're looking to get a lot of something for little or nothing. Once again, this is, this is, this is going to, um, really, really mess up a lot of people. So once again, if you want to, number one, optimize your money, enroll in home economics today. The course is 90% done. There's plenty there for you. And if you really, really want to set yourself up, enroll in the birth of home or the birth of Hustlers Kung Fu which includes home economics. And then we're going to build that out in the upcoming months. There's gonna be lectures, there's gonna be training, there's gonna be merch, there's gonna be a lot of stuff. So be sure to go ahead and enroll in glendingcameronschool.com.